During World War II, the United States government conducted chemical weapons tests on 60,000 of its own service members, with an estimated 4,000 servicemen receiving high levels of exposure to mustard gas. These men were held to an oath of secrecy for nearly half a century. Seventy years after the experiments took place, the government has yet to appropriately assist and compensate many of these veterans. This is the story of one of those men. In 1945, Arla Harrell was sent to Camp Crowder in Neosho, Missouri for basic training, where he was twice subjected to mustard gas. The service members who were forced to participate in these experiments were lied to and told they were testing summer clothing in exchange for vacation time. They rubbed a liquid chemical on my arm and hand and had me breathe the gas without a mask on. I had no protective clothing in the gas chamber. Service members reported that the doors to the gas chambers could not be opened from the inside, and they were threatened with court-martial if they didn't complete the tests. I was 17 years old. I didn't know mustard gas from high-test gas at the time. And they were told that there was a direct order that you had to go into the chambers at that time or you would be court-martialed and uh, sent to Leavenworth Prison. Afterwards, soldiers were silenced using threats of dishonorable discharge and imprisonment if they revealed their exposure. Following his exposure, Arla became very ill and was hospitalized at Camp Crowder. Since then, he has suffered from strokes, pulmonary issues, skin cancer, gum disease, upper respiratory infections, and lesions. This oath of secrecy prevented thousands of soldiers, including Arla, from disclosing important medical information to their own doctors and family members. I got burnt real bad, I got burnt on my foot, and I went to the hospital, second, third degree burn on my right leg, and I had to tell them I got burnt by coffee. In 1975, the Department of Defense declassified the last of the mustard gas testing programs, but World War II veterans were held to their oath of secrecy for another 18 years. In 1991, VA Secretary Edward Derwinski announced new guidelines to help veterans exposed to mustard gas and Arla filed his first claim. While this should be the end of the story, it's not. Because of systemic failures at the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Defense Department, the burden of proving mustard gas exposure has fallen entirely on elderly veterans, many of whom are very ill and don't have access to their own files. In 1993, a top VA official testified before Congress saying, I re-emphasize VA's commitment to these veterans. We have taken, and will continue to take all steps necessary to respond to the unusual circumstances under which they served. More than 20 years later, few veterans have been contacted by the VA and even fewer have received benefits. According to records, nearly 90% of applicants have been denied by the VA. Today, only 40 World War II veterans are receiving benefits for mustard gas exposure. Arla is not one of them. In order to receive benefits for mustard gas exposure, a veteran must prove that he has a medical condition recognized by the VA resulting from mustard gas exposure and that he received full body exposure to mustard gas. But this has proved impossible for the vast majority of veterans because the VA never followed through on recommendations to conduct long-term medical studies on the effects of mustard gas. Making matters worse, 80% of World War II service records were lost in a fire in 1973, and due to the classified nature of the experiments, records are unreliable as mustard gas exposure was often excluded from official records. Arla's service record was among those lost in the fire. He has applied for VA benefits for more than two decades and has been repeatedly denied. Despite having served at a military facility where evidence indicates these experiments occurred, and despite the fact that he has suffered from several conditions on the VA's list of related ailments. In 2015, Arla filed yet another claim for medical benefits. On April 21st, 2016, he was denied again. Arla's story is just one of thousands from World War II veterans who have been left behind by a broken system for 70 years. Each and every one of them deserve acknowledgement and justice. Read the report and help us take action.